The Nothing Phone 3A Lite is Nothing's cheapest phone yet, debuting in Europe and the UK this week for €249 Euros or £249. Pounds. Like all other Nothing phones, this one sports an OLED display with a 120Hz refresh rate, but it's not an LTPO display, so it just switches back and forth between 60 and 120Hz most of the time. As you might expect, the DC-like dimming rate adjusts a bit depending on what refresh rate is being pushed, so you'll notice the line jumping between modes when dynamic refresh rate is enabled. The DevInfo app shows that the display also supports 90 and 30 Hz, so if you're trying to lock the refresh rate, choose either 120 Hz or 60 Hz from display options, and then pick Force Peak Refresh Rate from developer options to keep it consistent, which will likely help some Flickr-sensitive individuals. As you might guess by now, this phone uses DC-like dimming above 50% brightness and 2160Hz PWM dimming below 50% brightness. This is identical behavior to nearly every other Nothing phone, specifically the 3A series, and modulation stays impressively low throughout the entire DC dimming range. I grabbed one sample at 51% here to show how low it is even at the bottom of the brightness range. Good stuff. That PWM dimming cycle kicks in at 49% brightness and is pretty good, with a nice 2160Hz rate and decent modulation above 35%. Below that, modulation gets a bit high, so if this one bothers you, I'd recommend keeping it at above 50% brightness and using a dimming app to dim the screen further. So, brightness is good, but how about dithering? Hmm, well, you're in luck, because this display does not appear to dither at all. From what I can tell, it's a 10-bit panel with no nonsense going on in the OS. I checked the usual spots for dithering, which is around text and icons, on the home screen, and on several different shades of gray, and didn't notice anything out of the ordinary when looking under the Carson microscope I have at 480 frames per second. I never like to say a display has zero dithering because there's always the chance some kind of software could force it, but the color banding I see on this grayscale gradient that I normally use makes me feel confident that this display isn't trying to pull any nasty tricks. All in all, this is an excellent display and one that should work quite nicely for a lot of mildly sensitive people. The low modulation rate in the medium to high brightness range is truly excellent and one of the better performers I've seen this year. If OLEDs don't work for you at all, this won't be changing that but this is a solid choice for anyone who can use low modulation OLEDs or ones with a decently high PWM rate at low brightness. Thanks so much for watching, and if you enjoy my content, go ahead and give me a thumbs up, and I'd love if you subscribe to the channel. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.